When you play the Game of Thrones, you subscribe and like. Or you die. There is no middle ground. All right, hello YouTube, and welcome back to the Grease Comedy YouTube channel. On today's video, we are going to be talking about how Game of Thrones slash Song of Ice and Fire changed my viewing experience of TV shows, of movies, of any kind of media like that. Because when I first watched the show, because I was a show watch before I watched or read the books, I got through, I think, the first four seasons, and then I picked up the books, and then I read the books a couple of times uh, while the show was going, and then after. But I was in 7th or 8th grade when I watched uh, the first couple seasons of Game of Thrones, and it was really, like, it easily became my favorite show very quickly, because if I have I had never seen in my life where there was actually consequences. It really felt like every decision that, you know, happened mattered, and that has become something that I take into when I watch shows now, if I watch um, movies. If they do not have stakes to them, I do not like them. And I don't know what your guys' opinions are on that. So let me know right away as this video is starting. Have your guys' opinions changed or how you watch movies or shows changed based upon this TV show or book series? But before we get into the video, if you guys like to like, subscribe, and comment, please do. It helps channel grow your appeal. I might like this content as well. Also, if you guys would like to follow the Twitter and Instagram just to see more of my personal life or to get in contact with me easier, I would use those. Um, those will be in the description. But yeah, so getting into the video, I want to talk about a couple things and give you guys examples of what I mean when I talk about how Game of Thrones... I'm going to talk about the show specifically um, because it is how I got introduced into the universe. But the show transformed the way i watched movies right so i want you guys to take it from the opinion of again i'm seventh eighth grade i'm still pretty young like especially to be watching that kind of stuff i was pretty young I, I probably was a little too young to be watching it at that point but i was watching it all the same and it got me starting to think more critically and logically about certain TV shows and movies. If you look at Star Wars, right? Star Wars had always been something I grew up with really loving. And I started to kind of poke holes into Star Wars, um, even though I still love it. I still love the first six movies that came out. I'm not someone that likes Star Wars anymore, um, for the most part. I mean, I, I will go back and rewatch the older movies and the prequels. But the newer stuff, the Disney, I'll just say the Disney Star Wars, I'm not a fan of. There's just too many, like, logical stuff that doesn't make sense. And it just feels like there's no real, like, stakes to anything. Um, so I'm going to give you guys some examples, right? So Marvel, right? Marvel is a, a really big one for me. Marvel is something that you get, you watch it not for the stakes and stuff. But I still, like, wa I love the movies I, that I like in the a Mar marvel like mcu are the ones that actually have stakes to them right um thanos in infinity war really great movie i think it's the best movie in the mcu um the winter soldier i think is a really good one i think uh civil war has really good emotional stakes and logically battling on who is right between tony stark and captain america or steve rogers but then it always felt like the MCU, at least in their major films, had some stakes to them and affected, and they all built off of each other. Uh, the new movies now feel don't feel like that at all. They feel like there's no stakes, there's no logical... Like, the, the stories just fall apart so quickly. Um, no Way Home, right, is the... I would say it's probably most people's favorite movie of... I guess, I think we're in, they're in Phase 4 now. Um, just the movies after Endgame. And... All of them just don't make any sense when you look at logically. Like, if you look at them not just trying to do a fun viewing experience or something, if you look at them logically from a story perspective, none of them make any sense. No Way Home, I think, is the biggest case of this. I've made a No Way Home with my friend Luke on the channel before, and they are just so illogical with how everything works. There's almost no... Um, hard decisions being made it's just a very weird film and, and if you look at this this new spider-man movies in general it just doesn't feel like tom holland's spider-man in general has grown as a character he keeps making the same mistakes over and over and over again that's how the mcu feels now where it's these characters that make the same mistakes over and over and over again and there's no character development right there's just there's no character development of them 
Or instead of going up and seeing them progress, they degress, right? I would look at characters like Loki in the Loki show. Um, if you look at his character, he degresses as a character, right? He becomes a less incompetent or competent character as the whole thing goes on. I feel like. Um, and let's get off. Let's get off Marvel now. So I've talked about Marvel. Um, how that's kind of how I view that things now. I look at movies and shows. I try to be way more critical. And a lot of people will look at me and go. You're just being a downer. And it's like, I like what I like. I'll sh I'll give you a, a great example of a movie that is not well loved, but is a movie I love for specific reasons, right? Because I've found out that my specific type of viewing experiences, I like kind of darker um, movies or shows that, you know, aren't afraid to kill characters. If it makes sense, right? If it makes sense, that is the number one thing. TV shows and movies have been trying to do this ever since Game of Thrones came out to they'll have surprise killings but if they don't make any logical sense or you have no build up to it i don't care it doesn't whatever right right and i'm going to point to a movie that it's not well loved it has its problems but it does a couple of things right and why i love this movie amazing spider-man 2 so this is the second andrew actually it's the last andrew garfield spider-man movie um in i guess his little series right and the big thing that I love about The Amazing Spider-Man 2, and I think it's the most Game of Thrones or George R. R. Martin written superhero movie, because the central conflict of it is the heart, the whole idea of love over duty or duty over love, that type of thing. That is the central theme of Amazing Spider-Man 2. Peter basically needs to put aside Gwen to keep her you know, safe and to not put her at risk. Right. And the other central theme that I want to talk about that movie is time. That's another big one that is a central theme, something that George R. R. Martin really talks about a lot in What Do You Leave Behind After Death and Your Time. Um, that movie, Amazing Spider-Man 2, is Peter Parker slowly giving in to Gwen. It's really where he's trying to push her away and not let her be a part of his Spider-Man type stuff. And as the movie progresses, Peter Parker kind of comes to the idea that he just can't do that. And Gwen has to be part of his life. And he reverts on that. And as soon as we see that Andrew Garfield makes that decision and lets Gwen kind of back into his life, we see that Gwen dies. Because Andrew Garfield makes the decision, or I guess Tom, or not, not Tom, Peter Parker decides to make the decision, there are negative consequences to that decision. And that's kind of what ends up happening. And it's kind of a darker end to the Andrew Garfield, I guess it's not a trilogy, but the two movies. And it's something that I really think is a great idea and is a really awesome way of doing that idea. And there are a lot of movies that do take on that concept, but that's a specific one I want to target because it's a movie that's not well loved. But in my eyes, it hits a lot of the great emotional beats and a lot of the things I look for in a movie. Um, and then TV shows. I'll give you a great example of a, of a TV show to me that loses me very quickly. These TV shows like Arrow, where they feel like they have no stakes to them, right? Like, because we know none of the main characters are going to ever die. No, none of them are ever going to die. None of them are ever going to be, like, it's TV shows like that where I just lose interest so quickly because there are no stakes to them. There are no... Like, what are we building to, right? We just we know this villain's going to be defeated. It just doesn't matter, right? It, it, those are the type of shows that just aren't for me anymore. And it's something that when I was younger, I would have said they were for me. They're just not that way anymore. Um, Lord of the Rings is a very weird one because I love Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings is probably my second favorite, um, I guess, series or universe um, out of everything. And even I agree that, like, George R. R. Martin made a statement where he's like, Gandalf should have stayed dead. And I agree 100%. Gandalf should have stayed dead. Gandalf should have taken on maybe a Star Wars role where they make Gandalf kind of like a ghost. He could have been a Maiar ghost and kind of been there maybe to guide Aragorn along every once in a while. But the show, sh or not the show, the, the, the book should have moved more towards Aragorn taking on full leadership of, you know, the three hunters and all of that and, and coming into his own not having Gandalf continuously be a big focal point of the story. I think it's a really good idea if Gandalf would have stayed dead um, because you take a lot of big hits in, in, in the first, I, it's actually in the books, Baromir kind of dies in the second book um, at the very beginning, but we'll just say for the movie's sake, you know, the, Baromir dies in book one because he makes some bad decisions. 
or, or movie one, my bad. And then Gandalf, you know, because they make the decision to go through Moria because it's kind of their only real option, Gandalf ends up dying. It makes a really good um, kind of conflict, right? And it kind of builds the stakes into book two, something that, that you know, is there, but when Gandalf comes back, it kind of dies those down a bit, in my opinion. So this video is really just kind of, me sitting down rambling about how my movie experience and TV show experience has changed because of Game of Thrones. Because of the things I look at, I look a lot more and I focus more on the plot. Does the plot make sense, right? If we're getting a big twist at the end of the movie, was this twist built up enough in the first, you know, hour of, or hour and a half of the movie? Or a TV show, if we get to episode, you know, 10 or 15, and there's some big thing that happens... Does this make sense? You know, it, it was that earned, right? And I like emotional conflict within a character. I want them to feel like a natural character where in real life, people have these decisions where they don't know what the right answer is, right? And they end up making the wrong decision, which has negative consequences on the rest of either the show or in real life. So that is are big, those are big things I like to look for in movies now. And I've noticed that I really do not like as many things now because of that outlook so let me know what you guys think if you guys agree with me on how you think about things or has that not really affected you guys too much where you just kind of go you know you watch something to enjoy it or something like that um but uh yeah let me know what you guys think and also i do want to say when i was talking about no way home no way home is a fun movie if you're going into it just wanting to have a fun watch and you're not really looking at the logical points of the movie or anything and you just want the nostalgia factor it is a fun movie but for me it's just not how I like my movies at this point. So, yeah. Thank you guys all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys. If you think this has a happy ending, you haven't been paying attention.